Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tom and today I've got more of the Marrier's Flea Market from September 2022. Let's see what we can find. So these are kind of cool. These are actually pencil sharpeners. And these ones are shaped like trains. And I don't know if it's the same vendor, but one other time I was here, there was a whole booth full of these and they came in all different shapes and sizes, not just trains. Pretty cool. This is probably the most spinning tops I've ever seen before in one place, so if you're looking for spinning tops, come to Marrier's. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. Thanks. <clears throat> Hopefully those are not live rounds. Yeah. I'm assuming those were dummy rounds, but I honestly don't know. I really like this mantle clock here. It looks like it's probably from the 60s, that would be my guess. But he's asking 425 for it, so that is a George. bit out of my price range. Just a little. So can anybody tell me what this wood carving is here laying down? At first I thought it was maybe a baby Jesus, but it seems to have horns and it kind of looks like a demon. Am I imagining things, or is that what that is? Let me know in the comments. And here's the owner's manual for a 1995 Ford Escort. Kind of interesting if you have a 95 Ford Escort. This is an antique container of anison, which is basically a mixture of aspirin and caffeine. I always thought it was a fairly new product, or at least, you know, not more than 50 years old. Uh, but apparently it first came out in 1916, and I would guess that container is probably from around that period. I was testing this glass out with my UV light to see if it's uranium glass, and I think it is. It does glow, but just barely. So here's something I've never seen for sale at a flea market, or anywhere actually. It's a voting booth, and this one is supposedly from the 2000 Florida elections where they had those hanging chads, if you remember that, uh, the Bush Gore election, and he was asking 550 for it. No idea if it's worth that much because, again, I've never seen one for sale. And I'll bet none of you have ever seen one for sale either. Kind of cool. This guy always has a great selection of old toys. So do we have any scientists out there that can tell me what this is? It says Brookhaven National Laboratories on it, and then it says property of U.S. government. I'm guessing it might be oh, some sort of x-ray technology or laser or radar or something. I, I have no idea, but it seems dangerous, whatever it is. I don't know. It's an insulator of some sort from a power line. Oh, yes. Yep. Oh, 
Uh, this, these are Jatim geese from Mason Glass. Here's a nice little collection of old 35 millimeter slides. I've actually got an enormous collection of slides at home that I inherited from my grandmother. There's probably thousands and thousands of them. I ended up scanning them all onto the computer with a special scanner that can handle 35 millimeter slides, but it broke and I've been searching for a new one online and apparently to get a good one that'll do multiple slides at once costs minimum $600, sometimes over a thousand. So. I won't be buying a new one of those anytime soon. And here are some magic lantern slides. Similar idea to the 35 millimeter slides. These are just a bit older. I'm sure you could scan these too. I'm just not sure how you'd do it. At least not well. Okay, so does anybody know what this is? At first I was thinking it was a woolly mammoth's or a mastodon's molar, but now I'm not so sure. It, it doesn't quite look like the ones I've seen for sale online, and the ones I've seen for sale online tend to go for hundreds if not thousands of dollars. Something different. No, for the for the water. No, I was over there at Camp Geiger too. Yeah, yeah, Camp Geiger. Did you did you get it? Here's some old eight millimeter film reels. I'm thinking these are probably from the forties or fifties. This Heckle and Jekyll one is six dollars. And I've actually got a decent little collection of these at home. The only problem is I don't have an 8mm film projector that works. I do have a couple of 8mm film projectors. They just don't work. And uh, good luck finding somebody local that can repair 8 or 16mm film projectors. So everybody's heard of soldering guns before, but this is a soldering pistol. And as you can see, it's actually shaped like a revolver. I would guess that's probably from the 40s. These are pretty cool. These are old cigarette cards. They would have been for sale in packs of cigarettes. And this is a set of 1938 WD and HO Wills military aircraft. I looked it up online and they actually don't go for a whole lot. Uh, not counting shipping, they seem to go for about 10 to $20 for the whole set of 50. Remember the Glong Show? These are some pretty nice ceramic jugs. If I didn't know better, I would think they are modern and not antiques. But I think that's just because they're in such great condition. And of course, I've got to check out the uranium glass with my UV flashlight. You can see down at the bottom there, there's some darker glass in the middle. That is not uranium glass. It's pretty easy to pick out if you know what you're looking for, but if you're not sure, just whip out the UV flashlight and see if it glows or not. This is about my speed. frogs. Even with a cane, I think. Oh, yeah. I might have to get that. <clears throat> yeah, only five bucks. Yeah. 
you see the, the butterfly is blue, you can see the shadow. <laughs> I love these enormous glass paperweights here that are shaped like chickens. At least I'm assuming they're paperweights because they do look a lot like those little glass balls you'll see for sale everywhere. I think this old Mickey Mouse music box is probably from the 70s. It looks a lot like a music box I had when I was a kid, and that would have been in the late 70s. Yeah, music. Okay. Whatever you call those. I've been looking for one of these for quite a while. This is an Xbox Halo edition from about 2000, 2001, I believe. I would consider buying one, but only if I could test it first, because every other Xbox I've ever purchased doesn't work. How much are you asking for the Xboxes? Uh, how many of the Xboxes? Is that? Yeah, I didn't see a price on any of them. 200 for this one. Oh, okay. This is the Halo yeah. edition. Yeah. I don't have the controller, but that one would work. This one, 50 bucks. Okay. Yeah, the problem was every time I buy one of these, they don't work. <laughs> so it's, True. It's um, hard I to, don't have a TV out here. Yeah, it's hard to it tell. Is. All right. I have a PlayStation 2. Also. Oh, yeah. Which is nice and clean. It does work. I just haven't tested the Xbox. Yeah, that's right. We went on vacation. Yeah. All right. No, thanks. No problem. Oh, jeez. He was mm -hmm. sort of on auto. You didn't wind it at all, did no. you? No. When you put it down, because he was facing this way, and he very slowly, and oh. there'd be a couple of notes. And <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of... I'm not exactly sure what this thing here is with the spikes on it, but I'm guessing maybe it was used for harvesting blueberries or something like that. Not sure. Hey, you guys have a nice day. Thank you. Which way are we going? Uh, that way. You always do it. Yep, you have oh. to do it. 
Quick question. What's the best you can do on a wiener mobile? That's what you best wiener. Um, the best wiener price. I was thinking like 280. That's a pedal cat, right? Yep. When you do see them on eBay, they're all four hundred dollars. And usually when you look there's you might find one or two. It was like a early eighties I went on eBay to check his pricing on the Wienermobile, and he does seem to be roughly correct. They seem to be asking about three to four hundred for them, but then again, I didn't see any completed auctions, so I don't know what they're actually selling for. But his price on it was probably reasonable. Okay, thank you. Yep. Have a good day. Have a good day. You too. Never heard of Blenwell Beverages. Looks like it's slightly before my time. I'm just going to put it back on the shelf where it was in the room. They would like it at the car shows if you bring it with the hot rod. Because a lot of people have really, you know, thought that it's something else. I I said to them, take it to a car show and park it next to the hot rod. I know they'd enjoy it. (laughs) Right? People just enjoy looking at it and going, remember the wiener movie? These slot cars bring back some memories for me. Uh, I remember back in the early 80s, I had a set of these made by Tyco, kind of like the one at the top there. And the main memory I have of them is running them too fast and the car going flying off the track. Pretty much every time I used them. But they were fun. It might just be just models or yeah. statues. And there you have it. That's the end of part two of the Marrier's Flea Market from September 2022. I have one more part, then we're done with 2022. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.